Did you know you're actually flying in the past? Neuroscience shows that our conscious awareness operates about half a second behind reality. What you experience is now is actually a story that your brain has already edited for you. Your Vario has a delay, sure, but the real delay is in here. By the time you hear that beep and decide to turn, you're reacting to old news. And if you try to fly logically by counting, timing or forcing rules onto a dynamic living environment, you break the very connection you need to fly by feel. To truly fly in the now, you have to trust the one part that's plugged into the raw, unfiltered data stream, your intuitive nervous system, your bird sense. And the gateway to that is flow. That optimal state of consciousness where time slows down, the chatter falls away, and you're guided by what some call the voice, that deep, instinctive awareness. And that's why you are sinking out while another pilot climbs effortlessly above you. It's not talent, it's feeling. A relaxed, focused awareness built through deliberate practice, playful curiosity, and a willingness to let go. In this video, I'll show you how to break the three invisible mistakes that keep your mind loud and your body numb, so that you can discover and experience thermal flow for yourself. Stick around because at the end I'll share a story from a 63 year old pilot in our community that proves it's never too late to change your flying. Plus I've got a free gift for you to help you do the same. Paragliding is a game of puzzles within puzzles and at the heart of it the end game, the fundamental skill we need to master is the climb, the ability to go vertical. Most pilots though fly as if the game is horizontal they chase lift looking for something better or get impatient and move on to other parts of the ridge before they've established themselves. But paragliding isn't fundamentally about moving, it's about climbing. The foundation of good, confident flying and flow is vertical mastery. Because if you can't climb efficiently, it doesn't matter what the next cloud's doing if you're already on the ground. Your real challenge is this, solve the puzzle of the air that you're in right now. Max it out, stay in it longer, Refine your feeling, refine your turns, get higher. As you're flying, check in. What's the max altitude that you've hit? Can you squeeze out an extra few meters on the next pass? Can you sharpen or make your turn more efficient? Can you find the exact center of the lift, the core? The beauty of this challenge is it works everywhere, even if you're coastal soaring. It sharpens your awareness of the air and helps you match what you're feeling to what you expected in the forecast. And the more you do it, the better your intuition gets. This isn't just useful on perfect XC days. It's a game changer when conditions are light or during those critical low saves where precision and patience matter most. And it's not always about perfect 360s. On light days, I'll often play by slowing my glider into wind and making small figure of eights in lift to squeeze out those extra meters. It can just be two meters, three meters, four meters, it doesn't really matter, but it takes patience. But that fine tuning builds not just your motor skills for low saves, it develops the mindset that you need for great flying. The reframe is this, fall in love with the climb. Fall in love not with distance, but with getting high. Learn to trust your feeling, become one with your wing and the elements. Because distance doesn't come from chasing it. It comes from vertical mastery through thermal flow. And here's the important part. When you give yourself a clear challenge on every flight, whether it's maxing out a weak climb, refining your turn, or squeezing out an extra meter, you naturally trigger the conditions for flow. You've got a clear goal. You're getting immediate feedback from your wing, your body, and the air, and you're stretching your skills just enough to stay fully engaged without getting overwhelmed. That's how flow happens, not by chasing it, but by setting the right kind of challenge and focusing completely on feeling. And if you're not doing that, chances are you're already making mistake number two. The second mistake is that we trust the Vario more than we trust ourselves. Too many pilots skip ground handling and rush to rely on an instrument. And both of those habits rob us of the chance to develop our own unique technique through feeling. The Vario becomes our master. We wait to react to what it tells us. But by the time it beeps, the air's already changed. You're flying in the past. Now I'm not saying Varios aren't useful. They are. Light lift and low saves, especially in the flats, can be incredibly subtle and tough to feel. But here's the truth. Your body is a far more sensitive, real-time instrument. You just have to train it and you have to trust it. The rising of the hip, a subtle increase in your brake pressure, surge through your harness. That's all instant data. You feel it before your Vario and your conscious mind even knows it's happening. The solution is to recalibrate your most important instrument, which is yourself. We need to develop and awaken what I call your bird sense, a deep, 
intuitive connection to the wing and to the air. A great way to start is with this. Turn your Vario sound off for short intervals. It can be 90 seconds, a minute, two minutes, and notice which hip is lifting, where the pressure is in your harness or your brakes, where is the lift really as you're going around in your turns? This basic awareness will rewire that awareness in your mind, sharpen your nervous system, and change how you fly forever. This body as vario drill is one of the core exercises that I explain in more depth inside my free guide, the Thermal Flow Toolkit, which I'll tell you how to grab at the end of the video. I flew my first 50K XC without a vario, a thermal to 2000 meters above the ground to touch a lone puffy cumulus cloud at the start of my journey. It is possible and it's one of the most rewarding things you'll ever do as a pilot. The goal isn't to ditch your vario, it's to relegate it from master to ally, from the thing you chase to the thing that confirms what you already feel instinctually. But to experience this kind of thermal flow, the mind has to be still. Which brings us to mistake number three. The third mistake is the biggest flow blocker of all. The mental interference that comes from flying with a loud mind. We all have the inner critic. Ah, oh, that's a bad oh, turn. Bad. Oh, you're going to land again. Gonna... Don't screw Don't this up screw again. Those... Why can't you get this right? Look, they're all Look, much they're better all than much you. Better. Oh, you got to show oh, this. Show... This is scary. This is... That's your ego mind. The voice of fear, judgment, and distraction. And here's the problem. That mental noise creates physical tension, it narrows your awareness, and you can't listen to the sky or feel the air if you're afraid or trapped in your head. So what you need is a pattern interrupt, something to break you out of it. And my go-to is something that I call the three breath reset. You start with breath number one, and you feel your body in the harness, feel the brakes through your hands. Then on your second breath, you scan the horizon slowly, from wingtip to wingtip and check the horizon to break your tunnel vision. And then on the third one, as you breathe in and you exhale, you relax your entire body and you silently or loud, you say to yourself, let go, you've got this. You can repeat the last one as often as needed. It's simple and it works. This quick reset breaks the anxiety loop, quietens your mind and hands control back to your intuitive, skillful body. Because here's the truth, the key to efficient flying is relaxed, focused and trust. And flow follows focus. And when you're in flow, something magical takes over. What really matters is that I'm not here to give you rules for how to thermal. I'm not handing you a bag of technical instructions to copy. Why? Well, because the sooner that you can let go of rigid instructions of right and wrong and start trusting your own feeling, the sooner you'll discover and experience thermal flow for yourself. Words can point the way, but words aren't the experience. Remembering an instruction isn't the same as a deep remembering of the feeling the air is giving you. I can only point out the path. The real aha moments, the awakening of your bird sense, doesn't come from me. They come from within you. Even if you fix all those three mistakes, there's one deeper trap that can stall your progress. Most of us treat every flight as a verdict of some sort of judgment. I'm good, I'm bad win, fail, we take credit or we reject ourselves. And that mindset kills joy and it blocks flow faster than anything else. The real shift is the stoic idea of amor fati, a love of your fate or simply trust the process. It means embracing the climb, the sink, the mistransition and the unexpected landing as essential parts of your unique experience. Because flying isn't about numbers, it's about the quality of the journey and we need all of those data points, the successes and the failures, to string along our unique journey. Let me leave you with a story that perfectly illustrates this. I received an email from a 63-year-old pilot flying in the French Alps. He's Dutch, his name's Bart, and he told me that in his younger years, he was dedicated rock climber and alpinist. It sponsored expeditions, big summits, chasing grades, until a serious climbing accident ended that chapter. Three years in rehab, a new career, a family, and eventually, a return to climbing. But only when he let go of chasing results did he discover the joy of moving in nature and being in flow. Years later, he fell in love with paragliding, bought the gear, did the SIV, did the XC courses, flew all over Europe, Colombia and India, and without even realizing it, started chasing numbers again. He wrote to me about how the last three seasons had rattled him because a few of his friends had serious accidents. That carefree confidence that he had had faded and fear started to creep back in. And that loud mind, well, that was back too. Then he came across the approach that I've been sharing and he told me, it made me realize it's okay to feel a little scared after a long winter. Every hour under my wing builds trust again. The goal isn't medals, it's presence. Just a few days before he had messaged me, he had set himself a 60K triangle goal, which he didn't make. Last year, he said, I would have landed frustrated, wondering what I did wrong. 
but this time he flew two and a half hours in smooth air, soaked it in, landed safely 15k short of goal, hitchhiked home and shared a great conversation with two mountain lovers. That's what this is really about. Not distance, not results, not judgmental verdicts. It's about presence, about feeling the air, quietening the mind, trusting your bird sense and finding that state where you're fully alive. And that is the way of flow. And if you want to start building that feeling for yourself, I put everything we've talked about and more into a free guide called the Thermal Flow Toolkit. It's a 14 page PDF packed with drills, mindset tools and exercises you can start using on your very next flight. Click the link below, download it for free and start awakening your bird sense today because your next breakthrough is just one thermal away. And if you want to understand the one thing that's probably holding you back, watch this video next.